Okay, so in this video, I'm looking at creating a set square. Uh, I've got the model of the set square I want to create here. Um, and you can see here that the vertical side is 90 millimeters or nine centimeters in height. Um, and because it's a 45 degree set square, I therefore need to have the horizontal um, dimension to the same distance of 90 millimeters or nine centimeters. Um, and if I then join these two corners together, assuming of course this is a right angle, then I should get an angle of 45 degrees. So I'm going to be modeling that first of all on Techsoft Design version 3 here uh, using a pale blue grid. You'll notice that this pale blue grid here is a different size. That's because this is a graphic and I can obviously resize that and you know the pale blue, blue grid will just distort. But here this is a five millimeter pale blue grid. Okay, so let's first of all come to the polyline tool here, and I'm going to try and draw the external profile. Um, and I'm actually going to start, I think, in the bottom left-hand corner. So let's start here. I'm going to come up 90 millimeters, and as usual, I'm looking at the relative references, which is this, di this little dialog box down here, which is currently blank. But if I come back onto the drawing area and move up, I can now see that that is 0 in the X and 30 in the Y. So I've gone up 30 millimeters. I want to keep on coming up here until I get to 90. That is 90 millimeters now in a relative grid um, coordinates box in the bottom left corner of my screen. Okay, let's click there. And now I can click on drawing because I'm using the polyline tool, not the single line tool. Um, and I'm now going to come down here. Uh, now, actually, I've made my life a little bit difficult here because... Um, I don't know necessarily where I want to stop. Now, obviously I can use some common sense here. I can realize that, you know, I want to come down to the same horizontal point as this line I've just drawn. So actually thinking about this, I can just come down to that line there. And, you know, I'm going to do this wrong on purpose. I'm just going to click somewhere like that. Okay. And then come back in and close that triangle off and then right click to finish. Okay, so I've got a right angle triangle here, um, but this is not a 45 degree set square triangle. And I can prove this now by going to my dimension lines toolbox, coming to the angular dimension tool. I'm holding down the mouse button here to expand my menu options. And now I can click on this horizontal line, click on the hypotenuse, and it will give me the uh, the 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 um, dimension, the, the angle here, should I say, and then click a third time here to place the angle. And I can see that's currently 50 degrees and 12 minutes. So, um, and if you think about this as well, let's actually come up here for a second. Let's just see what this angle is going to be. Now, I know that a right angle triangle at the internal angle is out up to 180 degrees, and I've got 90 degrees here on the right angle. Um, so I've got 90 left. Uh, that means that this angle here should be, well, it should be 40 degrees, but I've got 12 minutes here. So it's going to be 39 degrees and I think 48 minutes. Let's have a look. And there it is. So this idea, by the way, of degrees and minutes is a little bit strange. Uh, you're going to have to do, do some research on the internet or talk to your math teacher about that. It's all to do with bearings. Um, OK, uh, just while we're having a look at this, let's have a see. Can I actually change the way this looks? I'm just, I'm just playing around here, looking at my dimension settings. No, I don't think there's a way to have degrees in a decimal place. Anyway, just thought I'd investigate. So that's obviously wrong. Let's just undo there those di those uh, angular dimensions and see what we have to do here. Let's now come to this the standard parallel dimensioning tool. Let's just identify that length. Now I set that to 90 and I have this randomly set to 75 millimeters. Um, and for a 45 degree set square, I want these two uh, sides to be equal. So um, I'm going to modify this. And also as well, let's, let's just zoom in here on this hypotenuse. As I zoom in, I can see that I've got this rather jagged edge. And if I'm going to have a 45 degree line, then effectively what I want to happen here is to imagine that this is a series of steps coming down steps to a high tower, for example. And I'm coming down the steps here. And the key thing is, I'm going to stop at that point, but if I now grab a line and I now imagine that I draw this line so it connects to each of the bases of these steps, that is a line at 45 degrees. And if I zoom in on that line, I can see how this is a nice, even smooth line compared to the rather jagged line that I had for my initial mistake. Okay, so let's select now this um, this right angle triangle. While I'm at it, I'm going to shift select there, the 75 millimeter uh, dimension. And I want to make this equal to the vertical, which is 90. So clearly 75 
um, is is 15 millimeters short of 90, or I can take 90 minus 75 leaves me 15. So if I now select this shape, let's get, grab this handle here, and I'm going to move this to the right three squares of 15 millimeters, 5, 10, 15. Now that is 90 degrees. And notice now that by doing that, if I undo and then redo, I pull that hypotenuse in line with the steps that I drew earlier. Okay. Now, bearing in mind here that I've still got this black line hidden behind here. So now I can't see that black line anymore, but it's still there. Look, it's still there. I want to probably get rid of that. And of course, I probably want to get rid of those steps as well. So those steps and that black line were simply there as guidelines to help me understand this idea of making a 45 degree set square. And as well here, just to prove the point, let's bring in the dimension, angular dimension tool there and prove that we have got 90, sorry, 45, sorry, 45 and 90 adding up to 180 degrees, which is correct. Good. Let's just undo those. Uh, angular dimensions there. Um, I think as well, while I'm at it, let's get rid of that one too. Marvelous. Okay, so what I now want to do is bring in this millimeter and centimeter um, um, set of markings here uh, for a for a ruler along the edge here. And I'm also going to have some numbers in here as well. You notice here that this has no numbers. I'm going to bring my numbers in too, because without the numbers, I think this is not very useful. In fact, I'm going to approach this a bit differently. I'm going to have it so that rather than having 0 to 10, I'm going to have 0 in the middle. I'm going to go plus 5 to the right, and I'm going to go negative 5 to the left. Now, I can't think necessarily of a purpose for doing that right now, but I'm sure there's a good reason somewhere. So I'm going to go for it just to explore how this works. Now, at this point, what you might want to do is go on to the CAD file that you made for your ruler design, because on there, I've already got a 0 to 18 centimeter series of millimeter and centimeter markings, but I'm just going to do it fresh right now. So let's just, I'm just going to start the process very, very quickly. And then I'm going to pause the video and finish the rest off outside the video. I'm going to have that first marking as being six millimeters long. I'm going to have the five millimeter marking as being four millimeters long. And let's zoom in here. I'm going to have each of the millimeter markings here to be two millimeters long. I like that arrangement of lines. Let's now just take these lines here. I'm going to copy those and paste them and I've got step lock turned on here, bring them in. Now I'm going to take this, let's turn grid lock on. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to paste it. I'm going to bring it in. Take those, copy, paste. Take all of those, copy, paste. Okay, now have I got yet to 10 centimeters? Let's get the dimension line tool. Let's see how far I've got. Well, 10 centimeters, looking again at my relative grid reference down here in the bottom left-hand corner, 10 centimeters is actually going to be there. So I can see that all I need to do is just grab those remaining two centimeters of lines, copy those, let's bring them in, and then add on with step lock here, that final line at six millimeters. Absolutely marvelous. So I was going to pause the video, but it was so quick to do. There we are, we are done. I'm now going to have my zero to five and my zero to negative five coming in here. I think for this, uh, I am going to pause the video because you can just refer to that on my ruler video. Um, and uh, it is going to be a little bit longer. So let's pause and let's just see where we go from here. Okay, so I've made my numbers here. I've actually made them as individual numbers from zero to positive five and from zero to negative five. And I just need to line them up. And in terms of lining these up here, um, what I'm going to do, I think I did this in my video for the ruler project, but let's just do it again here. What I'm going to do is I think, let's just see how it's going to look. I'm going to grab this. I'm going to bring it up. I'm thinking about placing my number. Let's sort of see somewhere. I like that kind of positioning like that. So let's just now grab a line and it looks like, yeah, that's that's roughly where I want that number to be. So if I just drag that number to the side and if I now turn off the step lock and turn on the attach tool, click on the center of that, you'll notice that now there's a, there's a smaller square inside the bigger rectangle. And as long as I click with the end point of my of the line that I've just drawn within that square, it will snap exactly onto that endpoint. And I like that a lot. So what I'm now going to do with this is I'm going to duplicate this all the way along. Now, of course, what I could do is turn on the grid lock tool. I could copy this. I could paste it and I could drop it in there like that. I could keep on doing this. I'm not. I'm going to show another way of doing this. 
Um, I'm going to select that line. Um, I want to have it duplicated one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times. I'm going to come to the transformation tool. I'm going to come to the draw a rectangular array tool. I want to have a total of 11 of these because I want 10 more, but I've already got one. That's 11 total. Uh, that's columns vertically. I want one row horizontally. My X spacing is going to be every 10 millimeters and my Y spacing is going to be zero because I've just got the one row. Click on OK and that automatically creates all of those lines. So now with the grid lock turned off and the attach tool turned on, I can now come in and I can just drop those on the end of those lines and that's looking absolutely fabulous let's keep going whoops now i missed at that point okay you can see that my square wasn't encompassing the end of that vertical black line which is my alignment feature Okay, I hope you forward fasted the video at that point and didn't have to sit through all of that process. Um, and now if I wanted to, I could select all of those lines there and I could just I could just delete them. But I think in my case, I'm going to leave them there because in effect, it's do I don't I? I'm going to leave them. I'm going to leave them. But what I'm also going to do here, of course, before I go any further, is I'm going to select the lines I want to have engraved and make sure that they are red or green. We can work with either color is absolutely fine. Good, there we go, that looks nice. Now, I need to position this onto the hypotenuse of my set square. Notice, by the way, I can see a little error just there on this hypotenuse. It looks like it's glitched a little bit, but if I zoom in, it disappears. So that's just a screen anomaly. Okay, so to do this, what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to take this shape, actually. I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to paste it across here. So I can leave my, whoops, and look careful here, because I've got the attach tune turned on, and I've got a grid lock on step lock turned off. So now my design is off the grid. And so what I need to do now is delete that straight away. That was a, a, a fault. I don't want to propagate that fault. So I'm going to turn off the attach tool, turn on the grid lock again, select that shape, copy, paste again, and now I'm back onto the grid. Super important. You keep things clean and on the grid. So what I want to do now is basically rotate this so it's going to be horizontal. This line, the hypotenuse, is going to be horizontal. And then I can place this millimeter and centimeter markings in the middle of this shape. And I want it so the zero is going to be lined up with exactly the center of the hypotenuse, which is where that little yellow box is. Okay, so to do that, let's get a straight line tool. I'm going to actually draw in here a construction line. I'm going to click at the um, the right angle in the corner. I'm going to bring this all across and I want this to be a 45 degree line. Now I know if it's 45 degrees because number one, you'll see that I pass again through the step of each square. So it's going along and up, along and up, along and up. And secondly, if I look at the angular dimension down here, I will see that that says 45 degrees, which it now does. Okay, so that now means that this point here is exactly the midpoint of that hypotenuse. Now, I, I'm, I'm not really bothered about the fact it's 63.64 millimeters. If you know anything about trigonometry, you know that you're going to be getting a, an odd decimal place here. What matters is that I've got the midpoint there of the uh, hypotenuse. Okay, so let's just undo those dimension lines. And I've got that midpoint because I'm going to now be rotating my set square on that midpoint because that midpoint is on the grid. And that's important because I can then bring in my ruler, which is also on the grid, hence the importance of working with the grid. OK, so let's now select this shape. Uh, I might just move it a bit more to the right here. I've still got grid lock turned on so I don't interfere with this other design on the side here. Now I'm going to come back to the transformation tool. I'm going to come to the rotate the selected objects tool. I'm going to dial in here 45 degrees and bearings bizarrely work anti-clockwise so it's going to be perfect in this case. I want to rotate this anti-clockwise 45 degrees. I'm going to replace the existing uh, set square with my new rotated set square. Click on OK and the final thing to do here with grid lock turned on is click on that center point of the hypotenuse and there we go. That's now got my set square realigned to the grid with this uh, the, with this hypotenuse on that um, on that grid line. Let's just bring it up a little bit here. And now I'm going to grab my, uh, I'm only going to grab here the um, the actual, no, I'll tell you what, let's grab this. I'm going to grab that. I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to paste it. So I've left this behind as my model. That's good practice. I'm also going to group this together. 
edit group or control G. There we are. And now it means I can grab it just as one object. Let's grab this. And because I've got gridlock turned on, I can drag this in and notice how that is now going to perfectly align against that midpoint of my set square. Something else I'm going to do here as well is I'm just going to pull this back a little bit. I did this in my video tutorial for the rulers. I'm going to come to my step lock here. I'm going to bring it down just half a millimeter. And now I'm going to, because it's all grouped together, I can click on it once. I'm going to bring that down half a millimeter there like so, but keep it aligned otherwise. And that's now going to mean that when I laser engrave this, I will see. In fact, you know, is that that's too far away. That's too far away. Let's put that to 0 0.25 millimeters, a quarter of a millimeter. Let's do that. Boom. Oh, I'm liking that a lot. That's so subtle there. When I zoom out, I can see it. When I zoom out, I can't. And it's going to avoid this. Um, this this ruled edge here having a rough texture due to the engravings of the millimeter and centimeter markings. Let's put that um, step lock back to one millimeter before I forget. Okay, and now let's see. I mean, I could leave it like this, or of course I could take this design. Let's group it together again. Control G. I can come back to my transformation tool. I'm now going to go negative 45, and I can then click again with gridlock turned on on that midpoint of the hypotenuse and bring it back. And that is my set square, basically uh, with my ready to go. Or at least it's got now my uh, millimeter and centimeter markings with my zero to plus five and zero to negative five. Don't forget, of course, that we need to put a zero millimeter contour graphical um, blue line around the outside. That was in my video for the uh, ruler. Um, and I could send that to the laser cutter now and it would be a perfectly functional set square. Um, of course, we need to put our graphic in there, our, our cool font that we've designed for our clients. We could put some other images in there as well. And if I wanted to, I could also add in here, I'm just thinking here, a very small let me show that again. That was a one millimeter radius fillet. Let's just come in here and just put that on there. And you can see that when I do that, it actually fillets the, ah, interesting. Very interesting. It's, has it filleted the blue line or has it filleted the black line? I'm going to undo those two little features. I'm actually going to get rid of my, my blue line. I actually felt as if the fillet there was too big. I'm going to go with a 0 0.5 millimeter radius fillet because I want this to be, uh, you know, still quite a nice sharp corner, but really just making it just a little bit softer on the corners there so it's not too spiky. Um, and then now let's just do the contour again in blue around the outside. Click on the outside there and now I've got that contoured nicely, okay, rather than the sharp corners I had here with the original contouring. Maybe delete that so it's out of the way. Okay, that looks really nice. Um, so um, some interesting, you know, technical things going on there, particularly with these transformation tools, really powerful features. And um, hopefully you can see there how I've been able to recreate this design. And I've got my 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 um, my, my measuring uh, units on there as well. Okay, of course, you can go zero to 10 instead. I just thought I'd do it a bit differently. Fantastic. That's the end of the video and uh, enjoy the process.